in just kind of broad terms, a, a SOTIG uh, is, is essentially a new expeditionary framework. Now that's, those are big words, but this is how we're going to deploy in the future. Uh, the SOTIGs will be an O5, similar to a squadron echelon. Uh, when they go downrange, they're not just looking at AC-130 problems or MC-130 missions. Uh, they're looking at all of ASOF, all of our capabilities, and, and how best to exploit those capabilities downrange. Uh, as far as SO2s, these are more in garrison what we would call our flights. Um, and so the, the SO2s are a little bit more focused on the mission, uh, the mission specific um, uh, platforms. So we have ST SO2s, uh, we have MC 130J SO2s, U 28 SO2s. They, they are focused on mission generation. Uh, and again, they fall under these SOTIGs that will help maximize their, um, uh, how to exploit their capabilities uh, in a joint environment. The training had been um, intermittent and sparse for our just SOACs, and they got formed uh, at different points. Some got formed six months out, some got formed a couple months out. It just, it was variable depending on the theater and who was going. Um, so that limited training opportunities and connectivity between the staff. Um, and a lot of people, when we started out, they said, oh, it's just another name for a JASOAC. Um, I understand why people would think that, but it's so much different um, as far as what the staff is composed of, how they're trained, uh, the time they get together, the reps and sets, the TTXs and surtexes that they go through, how they're interacting with the TSOCs, how they're being instructed on what mission command means, um, and how we're actually preparing to deploy, which is really what we used to do 20 years ago, right? Um, and we're, we're starting to see some of that come back again. The ORIs, the ORIs that we uh, know and love um, back from you know the early 2000s, that's what a surtex is. And, and now we're bringing airmen back into that mindset of preparing to go uh, downrange. So based on how the SOTIC contract was with the bin cycles, 10 months ago I was notified during our individual unit training in which we started off at USAFSOS going through our SOTIC training courses uh, and as well as our AOR specific training um, where we got familiarized with the AOR, what SOTIGs were and SOTUs were, how they were gonna organize, train and equip, uh, as well as some of the functions that they were gonna do. Every bit of this project um, it is laid on to the, to the 4Gen concept. I mean, 4Gen is predictability. It, it, it's letting our airmen know how many days they have left to get ready to go deploy. And then we maximize that predictability and we exploit that to develop these SOTUs and, and SOTICs. So everyday airmen that are maybe at a flight level, even if they're maintenance, if they're intel, uh, or even if they're pilots, uh, they have a predictable schedule to get, to get ready for their deployments. So gone are the days where we're, we're, we're trying to tag airmen at the last minute to go solve a, a, a crisis. Uh, now we're getting into a more predictable pattern where we have anywhere between 10 and 15 months to prepare for that deployment. The pace we're moving at, which um, is, is a lot, but it's necessary to give to the airmen that are going out the door. And I'm speaking slowly for a reason is, um, this is what they need, this is what they deserve, and senior leaders are, are putting the momentum and um, the professionalism behind it. That's, what, that's really what I think separates us out right now. What we've done is expand the aperture to include all of the warfighting functions, to include intel, uh, movement, maneuver, um, fires, uh, information, all of the things that, that, that really we need to be mindful of when, when engaging in the new types of conflict and competition. We've become accustomed to going to the same areas, the same buildings, and just rotating through. These SOTIGs and SOTUs could, could be put anywhere. And so we've got to be ready to go into austere conditions. And these support teams are going to have the functionality to be more mobile once they become fully formalized and be able to support that SOTIG and vice versa, right? Um, so you're, you're almost going to have a mini garrison unit function. You're going to have the FSS and true squadron group type unit interacting together like you would at a garrison unit like oh i i, I need calm i need uh security forces support i, I need uh, bed down support that's all going to be there whereas conventionally we have relied on other base functions that we fall into to provide that right whether it be air force provided or army provided or a different theater providing it 
now we're saying we can build that package and work as a team to go anywhere. Um, that, that's pretty exciting in my opinion. Again, this new concept, this new framework, really takes a holistic look at what it takes to get aircraft off the ground and get them into the fight. Or for our SD uh, um, operators, what does it take for them to get access and placement to maximize their talents in the battlefield? Uh, I feel extremely confident and competent now going forward. Uh, in the in the previous cycles, I know it was kind of piecemeal where you, you'd show up and didn't really have a whole lot of that deliberate training and preparation. Uh, so I, I feel like we produced a better product as a team and I feel like we're gonna be able to go out and execute the mission uh, to the best standard possible now that we've had this deliberate training moving forward.